regardless of what happens in the world, he cannot lose sight of protecting his own energy resources because it might just so happen that he could be one of those who could help to change the course of history. In other words, disillusionment, despair, discouragement, bitterness, anger, frustration, all these do nothing to the person against whom they are turned, but they do everything to the individual who uses them. Therefore, no matter what we read in the paper, no matter what comes to us over the radio or in television, the individual must retain within himself the realization that there is a great good behind everything and that that great good will succeed and that this magnetic field we're talking about, which extends not only through this solar system but through the entire galaxy, decrees within itself by its own immutable process that evil can never win. We must go through certain travail in connection with it. We have to finally learn to our own satisfaction that we can't do it badly and be well off. But until such time, values never change. Never will we be punished for what somebody else does. Never will we be rewarded for the virtues of others. We must achieve these things ourselves through our own efforts, through our own integrities, and through our own dedications. And all of this is added up in a mysterious bank account which is called energy or magnetic resource. It is there to serve us. It is there to serve the individual who does wrong. But if the individual does wrong, the service collapses. And the individual who does wrong finally finds the energy turned back upon himself. And the corruption continues. We must keep this center of consciousness within ourselves in a condition of correctness. In Buddhism, the heart is called the Saptapana, the, the house or temple with seven rooms. It is within this temple, as Buddha points out, that the great initiation against the hindrances has to be performed. The individual has to be initiated in his own heart. He must accept as a fact that his own integrity is his only strength and also that his own honesty is his only wealth. All else is some kind of a delusion which will ultimately turn back and whip him. So in the quietude and peace of the realization of the immutability of good, the inevitability of right over wrong, the endless and continuous process of redemption going through every area of nature, all things in due time will come back into the peace which they sacrifice when they try to put self as an individual above universal reality. We are all, we should all, I don't see how we have gotten into the state we've gotten into really, because I do know but I'm not mentioning it. The real fact of the matter is that as we look around us, there's every reason to know that we live in a beautiful world. We live in a tremendous sphere. And we are already beginning to realize that we're destroying it ourselves. It is not some vast cosmic power that says we have to be selfish or that puts a profit against principle. These things don't exist in nature. We know that with moderation, with integrity and dedication, we could all live in peace and another five billion could live with us. But the way we are doing, we are sacrificing everything for a bowl of pottage. And if we continue to do this, the energy resources will be reduced. We are worried now about changes taking place in the atmosphere, that the overload that we are throwing against our natural resources is beginning to endanger us. Now we can go under our own skin and see that the same thing is happening inside of us. The overloading of our body with the problems and, pro and uh, processes of modern living obviously is going to result in destitution and death. We cannot afford to waste the magnetic field of the body or destroy it any more than we can afford to destroy the one of the earth. If we're going to run out of petroleum someday, we're also going to run out of the ability to recuperate from ailments if we dispose of and waste our recuperative power. The magnetism which helps digestion can be destroyed, wasted, 
by corruption. When we do, uh, take into ourselves dangerous foods, dangerous <laughs> attitudes, or when we eat with a dangerous mood, we are endangering ourselves. And when the world does these things, the world endangers itself. And we will not be the first civilization, as is said in India, the great mother of the earth has cast many civilizations from her back. Everything that goes beyond a certain point is destroyed because it breaks up its relation with its energy supply. It no longer is fed primarily by magnetism. Because it's magnetism in the food that feeds us, it's magnetism in the air that we breathe, it's magnetism in the earth that grows our vegetables, and it is magnetism in our souls that makes us hope for good. All the things we know, all the things we believe in, are energy dependent. And the use of energy is the most important thing. Why we go on year after year making all kinds of efforts to feel better, be better, or think better, and overlook the one fact that everything that we think and feel and believe depends upon a life principle, an energy resource, a magnetism of the earth itself. And that while this is destroyed or while this is abused, we will have the earth becoming more and more sterile. We have the have air no longer fit to believe. We will find the energies we have wasted lost to us forever. All these things require just one new concept. And that is that religion is basically the proper use of resource. It is to use the privileges that we have been given for the greater good of all of us. We have been made gardeners in a beautiful garden and we've let it go to weed. We have been given a beautiful planet and we've subdivided it and sold it for profits. The original purpose was that we should become a wonderful group of human beings working together for the good of each other and the glory of the universe. We are being prepared for a bigger job than we have, but we are flunking the examination at the present moment. We are not doing what we should do. Everything that comes along is measured in profit. Everything that comes along is measured in freedom from responsibility. When energy is something that we must be responsible for, or we will waste it forever. Or as long as we can. By the time forever comes, there won't be much energy left. But all this is a, a, a lesson in the morality of values. It is a lesson in the fact that we are the keepers in a garden. We are the gardeners in the garden of Allah, as the Muslim calls it. This is a beautiful garden that has been given to us, and we're letting it go to weed. We had a beautiful world with wonderful materials, so we dig under the earth and create materials to create war, death, and destruction. We have little gardens that we can have beautiful times sitting under our own palm tree, but we have butt fighting to take everybody else's garden away from them. And when we finally find a small plot of land that we might be able to use, we find the real estate agents have priced it ten times its value. All these things are all little things, but they all add up to the loss and waste of magnetic resource. They are the failure of the individual to protect the source of his own life, the source of his own future, and the breaking of the laws and rules by which he must compete compare his own needs with the, the needs of others. It is only when we work to protect the toadstool as well as the nation that we can have peace in the world. We must protect the small things because each of them is a run energy resource. The protection of them is, a, is against our viewpoint because we take it for granted that the small should be controlled by the big. That, we have, that small things like humble people are made to be exploited. This is not true. Everything in life is made to be used. Nothing is made to be abused. And the individual who abuses any part of life is contributing to the common cause of destruction. Now, this uh, business of the, uh, the energy and uh, magnetic resource went on down through to the present time. And now we have a new measurement for it, and that is the development of a large group of electrical devices, by means of which it becomes apparent to us that it is possible for the human being to make use of any energy as he sees fit. Now, the instrument that he has within himself is infinitely more wonderful 
than any television or any computer can possibly be. We can have a computer do everything, and it is alive. Don't for a minute think it isn't. But it is alive in a field of energy. It has a life. It can propagate itself. It can develop itself. It can grow up. It can grow old, and it can die. Because it is all part of an energy usage. But in all of these usages, let's remember that the individual is humanity's prime asset. The individual is here to grow. And in growing, he grows by helping everything else to grow. The moment he goes into negative competitive relationships with everything else, he destroys himself. So out of a great brotherhood involving potatoes, diamonds, computers, uh, television, music, everything, is part of a magnificent harmonic pattern. But the individual has forgotten or neglected to mature his own inner life. He was given religion in the beginning to help him to build an internal life. For religion was nothing but a statement of the rules. It wasn't a doctrine. It was a statement of the laws that have to be obeyed. Man has gradually disobeyed these rules, and now he questions the reality of religion. But he has never been able to prove that the religion was wrong. It was merely inconvenient. It prevented him from being as selfish as he would like to be. This being the case, he's in serious trouble. But out of all of this, we hope that the coming of the next century, that we're going to find the real basis of our understanding. We're going to discover the good universe, which we have forgotten existed if we ever knew it. We're going to suddenly realize that galaxies and stars and systems in space are not just simply something out there to, conv to provide us with energy to run motors with, or that we're going to save or solve all the problems of nature if we get a photograph of ourselves standing on Mars. This has nothing to do with it. We're living in a great, beautiful world of cooperating forces, uh, filled with things that want to get together and work together for the common good. And all we can do is make games out of them, silly games, games in which we think we're conquering everything by putting something in orbit. It's not, that's not at all true. And what really we are looking for is to realize that we conquer or we win or we achieve our goal when we put ourselves in orbit and we get back again into the rules of the game of life, serve it as it should be served, love as it should be loved, admire the good, protect it, and slowly and quietly outgrow everything that is less. If we can do that, then these resources, these magnetic fields, will supply us with all the energy the world needs for millions of years. It will not be the loss of the energy, but it will be that if we do not make these corrections, we will not be able to draw the energy to ourselves, and that which cuts itself off from life is the dead branch that is cast back into the fire. So out of an understanding of energy and the magnetic resources, we go a long way toward solving the present problems. That's it. Thank you.